Thailand has a very rich history. Much of it can be seen through its food. Thailand has an extensive gastronomic repertoire, starting from the royal kitchens down to the crowded streets of Bangkok. Presently, Thailand is under a constitutional monarchy, where the king does not hold absolute power, a far cry from the prestige the crown had hundreds of years ago. However, Thailand's royal cuisine remained mostly intact throughout the centuries, making its way to our kitchen. Hello there and welcome to Foodie Legends, your go-to source for the best foods to eat around the world and its history. Today, we are going to have a taste of Thailand's five royal dishes and gain a better insight of Thailand's colorful history. Coming in at number one on our list is Khao Che, which is not an exact dish on its own, but somewhat an elaborate ritual that displays the royal court's opulence and power. Rice is a staple dish in Thailand, and the chefs of the royal palace took this humble ingredient into a decadent gastronomic journey. Needless to say, preparing kauche is not a morning walk in the park. Making this royal dish is a complex process with complex ingredients. Kauche is composed of four main ingredients, parboiled rice, jasmine-scented water, ice cubes, and a wide array of side dishes served together with the rice. The typical jasmine rice is too soft for this dish, so the firmer type of rice, known as kao ta hang, is much preferred over the former. It is boiled the usual way and rinsed in a colander with running water to remove the starch. Afterwards, the rice is placed in a bowl and covered with ice cubes and water scented by jasmine blossoms. The rice component is eaten with a variety of side dish, such as kapi balls, which is made by pounding and sautéing shrimp paste, palm sugar, and spices such as wild ginger, shredded pork or beef, shallot stuffed with ground fish meat, herbs, spices, and fish sauce, stuffed peppers, and fresh chilies to complement the other side dishes. To eat kauche, you need to take a small bite of the side dish followed by a spoonful of rice and the scented water to wash it all down. Yummers. The beginning forms of Kauche is known to be a creation of the Mon people, who mostly reside in Lower Myanmar and several areas of Thailand. It was introduced to the country during the time of King Rama II and became an exclusive royal dish. According to the famous chef Mak Dang, a royal descendant himself, Kauche is the only Thai dish that can truly be considered as true Thai royal cuisine. Wow. Coming second on our list is a snack worthy of kings, Nyang Tam. Just like Kauche, this dish is not a single dish but rather a set of culinary adventures that one must enjoy thoroughly. Nyang Tam is a dish made of choices a luxury that royal people can enjoy in a leisurely manner. Nyang Kam is a traditional snack in Thailand and Laos, commonly eaten as an appetizer or during the rainy season. It is believed that Nyang Kam was introduced to Thailand by Princess Dara Rasami in the Siamese court of King Rama V. Its name is translated as one bite wrap with the words Nyang referring to the leaf used to wrap the other components of this dish, and cam means bite. There is an assortment of fillings that you can choose such as bird's eye chilies, ginger, shallot, roasted peanuts, tiny dried shrimps, lime, and toasted coconut shavings. The eater can then assemble his preferred choices and wrap it in wild piper leaves commonly known as chaplu. It is then served with a sauce made of palm or sugarcane syrup, galangal, and fish sauce. Chaplu leaves are more available during the rainy season, hence the reason why it is usually eaten during this part of the year. Myang Kam was born in the northern part of Thailand, although it originally used pickled tea leaves as the wrapper. It eventually found fame in the central region of the country, and today, Myang Kam is a popular street food 
cleanly wrapped in chopped blue leaves and eaten in one gulp. Truly a Thai favorite for friends and the family. Thai cuisine is wildly popular for its curry. Unlike the thicker Indian curry, Thai curry has a soupier texture, but don't let appearances fool you. Thai curry is famous for its hot spice. That is something that is well loved even by the royalties of Thailand. Coming in at number 3 on our list is Gai Rong Guan, a curry dish that is an ultimate representation of royal Thai cuisine and the entire country's love for the tasty, pungency, and fiery flavors. Gang Rung Duan is said to have been introduced of Thai royal cuisine during the reign of King Rama V. And when a royal guest had a taste of the soup, he said that it smelled good or runwan in the local language. Known for its distinctive flavors, Gai Rung Duan is a deceptively simple dish to prepare. The hallmark of prime Thai royal cuisine is the freshness of the ingredients and it will do the rest. But first, the curry paste. In a stone mortar, garlic cloves and chilies are pounded until it turns into a fine paste. But then you'll need to add shrimp paste, lime juice and palm sugar while continuing to pound the mixture. And now you have your curry paste. In a pot, you need to boil some water and there you will mix the curry paste you prepared earlier. Add some shallots, lemongrass, and more chilies for the extra fire and aroma. Now you can add thin slices of beef, finishing it with some sweet basil. There you have it, a steaming bowl of gay rung huan. Easy to cook, aromatic and spicy and can make the thigh noble sweat even on the coldest rainy day. Perfect. Coming in at number 4 on our list is the Masaman Curry, a dish that may not originally came from Thailand, but it became one of the favorites in their royal menu, remaining a classic in the country for the centuries to come. Masaman Curry has strong Muslim influences with its origins believed to be born in Malaysia and was brought to Thailand by traveling Persian and Indian merchants during the 17th century. Quickly, it became a favorite amongst the Thai royalty, its popularity surviving until today. Masaman curry is the most distinct curry in the Thai cooking repertoire since it's in the mildest and sweetest of them all. The spices for this dish is also a mixture of local Thai ingredients and foreign herbs and spices brought by the spice trade of the time. Just like most Thai curry dishes, cooking masaman curry starts with sautéing the curry paste, followed by the coconut cream. Only then you can add ingredients such as thick slices of beef or chicken, onions, potatoes, fish sauce, tamarind paste, sugar, coconut milk, and peanuts. The herbs used to flavor masaman curry is an assortment of dried and fresh spices such as cumin, cloves, coriander, peppercorns, fresh garlic, chili peppers, galangal, and lemongrass. The entire thing will then be boiled for a long time until the flavors marry with each other. Once it's done, Masam and curry is eaten together with rice in a bowl, together with other side dishes and some fresh vegetables. Masam and curry is a rich and hearty dish that deserves a spotlight in the dining room of a Thai noble. And so, it also deserves a delicious spot in our list. After eating all these spicy and strongly flavored dishes ahead on our list, it is best to conclude a royal food tour with a rich but sweet dessert, befitting a king. Coming in at number 5 on our list is none other than Sangkaya Pak Tong or Thai Pumpkin Custard. Despite its westernized name, Sangkaya Pak Tong is actually not made of pumpkin but instead with squash, which is more common in Southeast Asia. Sangkaya Fak Tong is a traditional Thai dessert made by carving the interior of the squash until it is hollow. It is then set aside, 
while the coconut milk is mildly mixed together with eggs, sugar for sweetness, and pandan leaves for the wonderful aroma, added with some cornstarch and salt. Afterwards, it will be cooled for a while and you have your custard ready. The resulting custard is then used to fill the hollow interior of the squash and the entire thing will be chilled so the custard can hold up inside. The final result is a beautiful cross-section of the orange squash interior supporting the rich, sweet, and fragrant custard. One can imagine it being served to the novels of a Siamese court and one can see it fitting well in the picture. Ain't that a wonderful dessert? Goddamn right. Thanks again for tuning in with us here today at Food Deal Legends for our latest episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and got a nice taste into the luxurious dishes Thai Royal Cuisine has to offer. Before you go, be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button for more delicious content every week. We'd love to hear your thoughts too, so leave a comment below to let us know what your favorite part of the video was or if you want to just leave us with a few thoughts. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one.